Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Sophie Erber. It's been almost a week since a Homer family lost their home and several pets to a fire. That same night, the family also experienced a victory. KCAU 9 News reporter Lydia Vasquez is joining us live now in the newsroom. Lydia, what was that victory and what's next for this family? That's right, Sophie. The wind happened on the racetrack in Jefferson, but there was more to it than the race. There was a racing community that came together to help a family in need. After losing their home and pets in a fire, the last thing Jessica Bates expected to do was go to Raceway Park to watch her husband race. Friday when we got the phone call, I know for all of us it was just so unreal. It's, you don't ever expect it to happen to you. She's glad they did. Her husband David won first place. You couldn't believe it. I mean, we had people in the stands. I don't think there was a dry eye or a person not standing or a person not even down on victory lane when he had pulled in. It was overwhelming. It was, we went from the lowest low to the highest high. It was amazing. And the community won their heartfelt thanks. My husband not only won his race, which we needed as a family, but we also walked out of the truck with over $3,000 from our racing family and donations. The owner of Raceway Park, Steve Corrales, says it was a night to remember. That's how great it turned out. They all wanted him to win after what his, him and his family had been through that morning. To me, it's part of my family as well. And any time that we can come forward for somebody that's in a time of need in their life, uh, we're all a part of that as well. On Monday, the racetrack became the site of Jackson Bates' fourth birthday party. Today, the hotel room that Bates are temporarily calling home is filled with gifts from a giving community. All of that, that's all yours. It's definitely been all overwhelming. I know on behalf of our whole family, it's, it's so incredible how much we've received and how much support and good wishes we've received. Um, I don't think we could ask for anything more. Jessica Bates says the Red Cross and the community have helped make their temporary home possible. She says she and her husband are looking for a house and they hope to have a place to call home in time for the holidays. Live in the newsroom, Lydia Vasquez, KCAU 9 News. Well, thanks so much, Lydia. Now for a quick check on the latest COVID-19 numbers across Siouxland tonight. Woodbury County Health officials reporting 27 patients currently hospitalized due to COVID-19. Officials also report 27 new cases today. This as the 14-day positivity rate continues to inch up. It now sits at about 12.7%. In Nebraska, Dakota County reports five new positive tests today. The county has recorded 93 confirmed cases of COVID-19 over the past two weeks. And in South Dakota, Clay County reports 118 active cases. Yankton County reports 138 active cases. In Hinton, students in grades 4 through 12 will soon return to on-site learning beginning tomorrow, Thursday morning. The school's principal says data shows that the Plymouth County positivity rate has gone down for three consecutive days and is currently below that 20% mark. The district absenteeism rate due to illness also well below the 10% level of concern. Students and employees returning to class are still asked now to continue following CDC guidelines. As colleges nationwide continue grappling with the COVID-19 crisis, Test Iowa launching a site on Morningside College's campus. It's for students and staff to gain convenient access to testing. The college says this site will provide testing to undergraduate students, faculty, and staff. Testing, as it's called, will be provided at no charge. The site is located at the Alumni House next to the Olson Student Center. You can find a link to sign up for that testing on our website at siouxlandproud.com. In Nebraska, three public health departments already in phase four of directed health measures. Now Governor Pete Ricketts says the rest of the state, including three Siouxland health departments, will be moving towards phase four. That is beginning September 14th. Outdoor venues will be able to go to 100% capacity. Indoor venues will be at 75% capacity. If you're going to have a large event, and when I say a large event, 500 people or more, you're still going to have to check with your local public health director, put together a plan, get that plan approved. So that will still all be part of the DHM. Lancaster County will be the only Nebraska County not advancing to phase four at this time.
Also announced today, Nebraska creating a new state disaster response team that is aimed at helping local governments overwhelmed with massive wildfires and other disasters. Major General Daryl Bohack says the need for this new team was made apparent after a complex set of fires in western Nebraska in 2012. But the team will be fighting much more than just fires. This team can also respond to all other hazards. It's designed to do that, to bring in a layer of coordination and support to local response to make it effective. So it's a, it's a definite, uh, definitely a great moment for us in the state of Nebraska. I, I think the other thing that's really important to remember here is this gives locals great confidence that they have another ability in the state to rely upon. Governor Pete Ricketts says it will only respond if local governments request it. Western Nebraska saw a major wildfire in Banner County last month that burned more than 4,000 acres. Time now to turn our attention to the weather. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by. And Marcus, correct me if I'm wrong, but yesterday we hit a record uh, low high temperature. And today, a little bit warmer, but not by much. That's right. Yesterday was a record-breaking day in Siouxland. We had never had a day with a high temperature as cold as what it was yesterday, on yesterday's date, that is, for September 8th. For September 9th today, we are seeing temperatures a little bit warmer. 53 degrees for your high temperature in Sioux City and Wayne today, so reaching up into the lower 50s for most of us, getting to 52 degrees there in Lamar's. High temperature reaching 50 in Yankton, Orange City, and Spencer today. A high of 49 recorded in Cherokee and 46 in Storm Lake, so a little bit cooler there today. Overnight tonight, we will see those temperatures drop down into the upper 30s and lower 40s throughout much of Siouxland, so another chilly night in store. It does look like those clouds will stick around. We might see a few sprinkles tonight, but it's looking like a fairly quiet night throughout the area. Tomorrow, looking a bit better weather-wise. I'll have details on that, and with the week Weekends looking like coming up in the nine on nine. Sophie. All right. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, as school continues for students both in person and online, some parents tonight say virtual learning is presenting challenges for them too. Bethany Fuller says her kids have been learning online for five years now, and she says the first month is always the hardest, but the longer you stick with it, the easier it becomes. I try again. So you'll get to a point sometimes where you just realize what you're doing isn't working. So you just try something different and every kid is going to be so different. Coming up tonight at six, KCU 9's Jessica Watson shares more ways to help teach your kids online. President Donald Trump believes there could be a COVID-19 vaccine available before the election, but his top health officials tonight, a little less confident. KCU 9's Washington correspondent Morgan Wright reports. Our best hope to stop these deaths is a safe, effective COVID-19 vaccine. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren and other Senate lawmakers questioned some of the nation's top health experts about efforts to produce a safe and effective COVID-19 vaccine. Dr. Francis Collins, the director of the National Institutes of Health, expects one of the six vaccine candidates in production to be successful. Will it be done uh, by a certain date? I could not possibly tell you right now because I don't know what's going to happen right. in the coming months. I do have cautious optimism that by the end of 2020. President Trump says a vaccine could be ready even sooner before Election Day. Some lawmakers like Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders say they don't want approval to be a political decision. Will you enjoy join me and many others in telling the president of the United States to get out of science. The decisions about how this vaccine is going to be evaluated and assessed is going to be based on science. One vaccine maker, AstraZeneca, is pausing production after discovering an unexpected complication, but Dr. Collins says the process still has time to work. We're investing not in one, but six uh, different vaccines is because of the expectation that they won't all work. There's likely to be a COVID-19 vaccine ready for the most vulnerable citizens by the end of the year. Senator Lamar Alexander says the challenge of gaining the public's trust in a vaccine will be a major hurdle. In Washington, Morgan Wright, KCAU 9 News. With just a canoe, an Upper Michigan couple set out on a harrowing 115-day trip down the Mississippi, the second largest river in the country. How their journey is raising money for a good cause coming up. And it's looking like the rain is going to wind down overnight tonight. We'll see a gradual warming trend as we head into the weekend. And it looks like more rain possible on Friday. I'll have those details after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Herber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5.
Thanks for staying with us. We were just talking, and it's been kind of a first a shock to the mm -hmm. senses, but yeah. now a gradual uh, incline of temperatures, yeah. we can say, because mm -hmm. we're marching slowly towards uh, some more average temperatures because right. we're well below today. <laughs> yeah, we are well below today, well below yesterday as well. It's been a very chilly last couple of days here in Siouxland with clouds and rain to go along with that. Right now, outside the Ho-Chunk Center in downtown Sioux City, we are seeing those mostly cloudy skies, but it does look like the roadways are dry down there. We've actually had fairly dry weather today. A little bit of rain earlier this morning for us here in Sioux City, but for the most part this afternoon has been on the drier side. The heavier rain falling in southern Siouxland, that was the trend yesterday as well. The highest rainfall totals did occur in parts of southern and southeastern Siouxland, and the same today with Denison at around six-tenths of an inch, almost a half inch there in Carroll, Tacoma at three-quarters of an inch of rain. So as you head south, that's where you'll really notice the soggy conditions. Here in Sioux City, we were just shy of two-tenths of an inch as well as Wayne. Lamar's coming in at right around a tenth of an inch. Also Spencer. Orange City, barely anything at one one-hundredths of an inch of rain. And Yankton, as well as Cherokee, reporting zero uh, as far as rainfall today. So it is looking like we are going to see things on the quiet side as we head into the overnight period. As we head into next work week, the sun comes out and it looks like our temperatures will warm back up into the lower to mid 80s. So that summertime heat and not quite done yet. Looking forward to that. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Mm -hmm. well, with the presidential election less than two months away now and campaigns in swing and states, they're ramping up here locally too. In Sioux City this morning, the Team Trump on tour bus kicked off their Iowa campaign. The tour will be traveling through Iowa over the next three days. You can find the full story on our website right now. That's SiouxlandProud.com or you can check out our free news app. As kids experience a so-called new normal at school, one musician wrote a helpful song to keep them safe. How he was inspired to put pen to paper, coming up. And a Michigan couple set out to canoe down the Mississippi River, even paddling as much as 82 miles in a day. The story behind their inspiring canoe trip, next. Barges, heavy winds, and a whole lot of mud. Those are just some of the challenges an Upper Michigan couple and their dog faced as they made their way down the mighty Mississippi. Brianna McLean has the story. It took Nate and Krista D'Onofre and their dog Marcy 115 days to complete their mission to canoe the entire Mississippi River. Although they finished this feat, there was a deeper meaning behind it to inspire those with disabilities and remind them of their capabilities. I am the first uh, amputee to ever, double amputee to ever canoe the river and the first American double amputee to ever paddle it. Barges, heavy winds, and a whole lot of mud were some of the challenges they faced. Excessive tick bites almost cut the trip short after Nate fell extremely ill. I had to get an ambulance actually. In Grand Rapids, Minnesota, had to get an ambulance and uh, took a few bags of fluid and and uh, some other some other remedies. And by the next day, we we're back on the river. I asked them what they missed most while away on their journey. I missed my dog. We uh, we brought one dog, but I had another dog, and I I did. I was singing songs about him the last month. I couldn't wait to get home to get a hold of him. Um, and pistachio cake. Cooking. I like to cook. My husband likes to eat. It's a match made in heaven. But I've already made some homemade bread and some cinnamon bread and the pistachio cake. And yeah, he's already gotten all the good stuff he's getting for a while. Many people along the way provided hot meals, a shower, and supplies for the Donofries. And the people were so kind. They're very nice people that we met. Um, a lot of them were river angels, but some of them just had family with disabilities and they, they knew people with disabilities and they'd heard about us and they wanted to meet us and support us in whatever way they could. When an Arkansas musician heard about his former students heading back to school, he recorded a song to keep them safe. It's called Mass Class, what he hopes the music will inspire in children next. An Arkansas artist created a song for kids to help them remember the important steps to stay safe as they go back to school. And as a former teacher, he says past students have been on his mind. Alexis Wainwright has his story. Little Rock native Braylon Lanier has been involved with music most of his life. Wash your hands and wear your mask. That's why people know him better as Bray Lenny, a local artist. But before that, to respect your class. He was a teacher in the Little Rock School District, and recently, former students have been on his mind as a result of the pandemic. Kind of think about the kids all day, and I was kind of sad they had to go back to school and stuff, so just wanted to do something 
with my passion to give to them. Lanier soon thought about his former colleagues and what they're dealing with. It is, it's hard, and you try telling the five-year-old, hey, you can't play, you can't be close, it, it's not going to work. So with a combination of making a beat, finding a melody, and topping it off with some lyrics, Make sure that you respect your he recorded a solution to teach students the new way of life. The song is called Mask Class, and it's basically telling kids, you know, to be respectful in, in your class. Now, wear your mask, wash your hands, practice social distancing, uh, just be sanitary. Within an hour, he finished the song and had some special guests shoot a music video. And since then... Palm Bluff. Uh, school district posted it on their Facebook page, so that was dope. Um, a bunch of my teacher friends, former colleagues and stuff, been reaching out and showing it to their classes and all kinds of good stuff, but the kids are loving it. As far as what's next for him, he says he has some albums he wants to finish up first, then he wants to find a way to get back on tour next year. He might also look into making more kids' songs if this one becomes a hit. Let's take a quick live look outside. Now Mark is another check on our forecast. That's coming up next, so stay with us. ABC World News follows this newscast, but first, a quick check on what we're working on for KCAU 9 News at 6. Tim joins me now from the newsroom. Hey, happy hump day there, Sophie. <laughs> happy hump day to you. Yeah, upcoming at 6 tonight, the school year's already over for one teacher at Sioux City Bishop Heelan, and not because of COVID-19. Find out what's behind his early departure and why he's getting a special send-off. That's all coming up shortly at 6. Elsewhere tonight, something else you should look forward to. What started off as something exciting and new is turning troublesome for some parents trying to work and teach their kids at home. We'll share one parent's experience and what they recommend tonight at 6. These indeed are interesting times. And the unexpected consequences of the massive wildfires out west. One high school now turned into a holding center for hundreds, in fact, maybe as many as 350 animals needing shelter. A closer look at that problem coming up tonight at 6. Of course, Sophie, right here, those winds fanning the smoke this way, but luckily the recent rains have kind of cleared our skies just a little bit. We'll see you out there at 6. All right, see you soon, Tim. And speaking of wind, we were talking about mm -hmm. how those wind gusts have actually died down a little bit, yeah. it sounds like, in Siouxland, but lingering chillier temperatures. Yeah, those chilly temperatures, they'll continue tonight. We'll see things drop down back again into the lower 40s and even a few upper 30s tonight. So another chilly night. We might see a, f a few stray showers, but I'm not expecting too much there. Tomorrow, again, we might see a few stray showers, but for the most part, I think tomorrow will be dry and a good bit warmer with temperatures reaching into the lower 60s. Pleasant day for us. Yeah, Thanks bad. a lot, Marcus. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here at 6 with Marcus. Until then, have a great night.